Tess Long is changing the game with borescopes. In this video, we're going to get hands on with one of their latest pistol borescopes and one of their latest rifle borescopes. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. What I've got here is Tess Long's NTG 100P for pistol and NTG 100H for rifle. These are both USB borescopes. The NTG 100P is a 10 inch model and the NTG 100H is a 26 inch model. In this video, we're gonna get them out of the box. We're gonna plug them into my laptop. We're gonna take a look at a pistol barrel and a rifle barrel and more. So let's get this thing going. Okay, NTG 100P. This is a nice compact unit. Comes with a little cap on the end. Nice cut foam packaging. When you see the price of these, you'll be surprised. They're actually really affordable. Okay, so we have a USB-C connector here, and then we have a dual function plug. The plug has a typical USB plug end like you'd have on your laptop or on a desktop PC, but you can flip back this little metal shield here and it's got micro USB. So regardless of whether you're using micro USB, traditional USB or USB-C, you're gonna have a way to plug that into your device. I plan on using my Windows laptop. This is running Windows 10, so the built-in camera app is gonna work with it right out of the box, which I love. And then later in future videos, I'm gonna take a look at tablets and other devices. So if you look at the end here, We've got six LED lights. We can use this looking straight down the bore. And there are also a number of mirrors that attach to the end that give it a right angle functionality. That's typically how I use a borescope to look at the lands, the grooves, the throat, the chamber area, and so on and so forth in either a rifle barrel that's got a bottleneck cartridge that I'm chambering on my lathe, or when I'm inspecting a pistol, for a pistol review and so on and so forth. What I like about Teslong's design, and I have not tried this yet, is the fact that it has adjustable focus. So when you install these 90 degree mirrors, there's a little stop nut here. You can actually basically fine tune the mirror. There's different diameter mirrors for different diameter barrels and then adjust your focus and lock that in. So that will be really cool to see. And then we've got the instruction sheet. Okay. NTG 100H. I did have these out of the packaging to take a look at them and do a basic inventory, hence my familiarity with them. Okay, so we've got the probe. This has got the 26, this kind of makes a funny sound, 26 inch rod on this one, and it's got just very similar construction. In fact, if you look at the ends here, I'll show you an up close B roll shot of that. They look basically identical but of course this has much more length and this is going to be great for when we want to look all the way down a rifle bore and if you have a longer than 26 inch barrel then you can look in from the breech end and then look in from the muzzle end that kind of thing so there's an actual plug on this one and that uh, adapts basically plugs right into this cable i have not had this on yet but i can see a little notch there and we have that going straight in aligns with the pins. Tighten the nut here. Okay. So that's nice that that's detachable for this longer model. And then again, we have a USB C connector. And then we have this dual function micro USB and conventional USB plug. I have a very similar looking packet of mirrors for that. And then I have the user manual for this guy as well. So. That is what is included with the NTG 100P and the NTG 100H. Next, we're going to hook it up to my Windows 10 laptop and take a look at what kind of images they produce. These borescopes both have a rod diameter of under 0.2 inches, and that means they're great for 22 caliber bores on up. Actually, I measured it, mine measured 0.195, that was with a micrometer. So I have accordingly picked out a 22 caliber barrel. We've got a takeoff barrel here from a 22 250 that is in pretty rough condition. And then I have a brand new barrel blank. This is a Krieger six millimeter barrel blank for an upcoming build. And I thought we'd start with the rifle bore scope, take a look at these bores, and then we'll take a look at a pistol after that. 
So we're gonna just take this plug, we're gonna have the uh, plug side, the block of plastic on the bottom there. Okay, that plugs in. Okay, and now if I switch this switch view button there, we can see the bench top there. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, so let's take a down the bore view, the zero degree view. Look at that. You definitely see there's still some, some copper in there. I didn't do a detailed cleaning job before the rebarreling because I felt like I didn't need to. Okay, and then let's uh, take a look at the brand new bore here. You can see we have a lot of uh, kind of dust in there. It's very evident. I haven't uh, cleaned it yet. This is just sort of the factory lube, whatever uh, was in there. So keep that in mind when we take a look here. So I'm gonna try installing one of these mirrors. We're just gonna screw that on the end. Kind of gives you an interesting view there on the laptop. <laughs> and we're gonna push this nut up against that and see if this mirror is gonna work good and if we're in focus. Okay, not quite. Try backing it out a little bit. See if that's better or worse. Let's see. Okay. Try out a little bit more. Interesting. Try it in a little bit. That's definitely worse. So I think we're we liked it in this in this sort of more outer configuration here. Yeah, that's looking it's looking really good actually. You can see some pretty good detail there. I'm going to lock it in in approximately that position. All right. Let's take a look in here. So we're in the chamber. There's the throat. You can see how you can see how eroded that is. See how clear those heat cracks are? That's that's actually really nice. And then the heat cracks continue and they continue and they continue. You have to get pretty far down the bore for that heat cracking to kind of uh, dissipate. We still have some some real marks there. Some of that is from the manufacturing process. Those crossways marks are typically from the, the drilling where the rifling doesn't completely take out those, uh, those drilling marks. There is some copper oxidization there and there's the end of the bore. So here we're able to get completely out the other end. Let's now see if we're in focus here in this other bore. Oh, you look at that. Yeah, you can definitely see <laughs> the difference in in quality there and if we rotate it you know we can take a look at the various lands and grooves at this particular depth that we're at here it appears to be the uh, the lapping marks you see we don't have any tooling this is definitely a a top quality barrel again we could spin it a little bit yeah take take a look around a little bit Looks like the focus worked for, for both of these pretty well, I would say. See how far that goes. Okay, so our barrel blank is a little bit longer than the 26 inches that we have here to work with. So that is a quick demo for rifle. Let's next take a look at pistol. So I got the rifle barrels out of the way. We've got my Glock 20. So this is a 10 millimeter, but I have a couple extra barrels. Thought it'd be interesting to look at polygonal rifling and conventional rifling. So. We've got the NTG 100P. We're going to plug that in via USB. Hello. <laughs> and when we click on the reverse camera, boom. Now we've got this bore scope. We can take a quick look up the factory barrel there. There we go. All the way through. <laughs> And then the same thing with a couple of these other barrels. So I've got 10, 40, and I've got 9, 
for this this Glock 20. You can see some copper in there, definitely. Okay, so for this, we're going to take a look with the red banded mirror. This one appears to be larger in diameter, and I think that's going to help us with this kind of a, a scenario. So yeah, there we go. Let's see where we need to hold that. Let's try a couple different focus settings here. Yeah, that looks good now. I'm gonna crank it even a little bit further. This is something that you can experiment with based on the barrel that you're that you're looking at. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Okay, so this is the polygonal barrel, and of course we can we can spin that as well. Let's take a look at one of these stainless barrels. Here's the nine. This may not be in focus. Oh, it looks pretty good actually. The green is that copper oxidization. There's some interesting debris. Yeah. So if you get it the right distance like that, you can see we've got a really nice clear image. We can spin the barrel and see all the way around. So that gives you an idea of what you can do handheld with these. I've got one more thing I want to show you. This is going to be awesome. This is essentially an emulation of what my friend and master gunsmith Gordy Gritters has put together on his Precision Matthews PM1440 GT lathe. What I've got here is an Aloris style quick change tool post. And I've got these tool post holders. This is a boring bar holder that has a one inch bore through it. And you use these split sleeve reducers to take your, this is a three quarter inch boring bar, put it in there, it crushes the split sleeve. So what I did is I machined one out of aluminum. So this is one inch on the outside diameter and it's 5 8 inch, which is the exact OD of the body of the Teslong bore scope on the ID and I split that bushing as well. So what I can do is drop this on the lathe we can run this inside, check that out. So there's our chamber. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna see the start of the transition to the rifling right around here. So this is, this is our throat over here. And right here, we have that transition to the rifling. And what we wanna see when we're cutting a chamber is we wanna see this uniform all the way around so that when the bullet starts to get engraved by the rifling, it's engraved evenly, everything is centered up. This is a very critical part of accurate chambering and that's gonna result in a really accurate rifle. So this is gonna allow me to do multiple things. It's gonna allow me to check for chatter. I can see what the surface looks like in here and then when it comes to these critical things like the throat area, I can make sure everything is looking really good and what's awesome about that is it gives you a chance to do something about it ahead of time. If you're a gunsmith, this would be a great thing to record. Hey, here's the rifle I built for you here. Here's how awesome the chamber was cut. So I am happy. Well, I'm really liking my new bore scope setup. I've got some for long guns, I've got some for chambering and for pistols. This is awesome. And if you click on those links down in the video description, I'll link directly to the product pages for these particular bore scopes. Also, consider this a preview. As you saw on the lathe, I'm gonna be able to capture these chambering jobs and gunsmithing jobs with greater detail. I'm gonna be using these, in fact, in the next few days for some really cool gun reviews that you're gonna to wanna to check out as well. Are you rocking a test long bore scope? Drop a comment and tell us all what you think about it. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Thank you.